on uh you can't watch, right? I can't watch. Because of Fox Sports North not being on <laughs> I, 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 YouTube TV or what? Hulu? It's not on Hulu, right? Yeah, I'm going to give this. I'm probably going to give it at the do? end of the year. I'm probably going to give it into 2021. If there's no steam and if there's no deal, I'm probably going to have to figure out a new plan. So you can't, you you would, I, I think you're okay now. My observation of you is if we, if the wild starts to play. Yeah, I'm going to need hockey. Because I don't see you not watching hockey. I need hockey. Well, and m- more specifically, I think I need the wild. If it's not the wild, you won't hey, be happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, if it wasn't the wild, if the wild weren't playing or anything, I probably wouldn't give a crap. But uh, I need, I need the wild. I come to you with wolves talking points. All right, because because Dex, Dex, I am a sick man. I watched the entire game last night, including the OT. I flipped a football late, so I started. I watched from opening tip the entire game. I am all in. I don't know why exactly, but I am. All right, Wolves talking points. Number one, and these, for the most part, positive points. All right, wow. Shocking. Now, I, I believe they trailed by something like 18 or 20 late in the game. Malik Beasley hit two or three threes. Uh, they started to come back after Dallas uh, put its starters on the bench and ultimately rallied for a 129-128 overtime victory. Uh, talking point one, though, Jarrett Culver, okay? Jarrett Culver was in his first year with the Wolves, a disaster from the free throw line. He was absolutely <laughs> atrocious. 18 points last night, 5 of 12 from the field, and most importantly probably f- for him, 6 for 6 from the line. I'm not going to sit here and say that I think that Jarrett Culver is going to be a savior, because I don't, but I do think with what he can bring potentially defensively, which, by the way, this team is going to need badly, I don't know consistently where the defense is going to come from, and I don't think they're good enough to outscore teams. So I do think that the Okogis and Culvers are going to have to play, yeah. like they're going to have to play them. Um, but I think with what we've seen from Culver, the new shot, uh, he looks. I think he looks stronger. Yeah. That I that this is go- going to go from being what appeared to be an incredibly questionable draft pick, not because of desire, but just because of talent, to what could be a solid pick. Not a great pick, but a solid pick. And again, I will point out the most important thing to me and the most important question when the regular season starts and they're going to start on Wednesday against the Pistons at uh, Target Center is where is the defense going to come from? And Jared Culver can at least help with that. This note from Dane Moore on Jared Culver last night, who was on our show a few days ago. Friend Friend of the the, show? Yep, friend of the show, as I like to say. say. Uh, Covers the Timberwolves very well. He says Jarrett Culver is seven for seven from the free throw line this preseason and nine quarters of play. It took Jarrett Culver nine games last season yeah. in 21 attempts yeah. to make seven free throws. So, I mean, even if this guy finds a shot, he's going to be an automatically better, better player. And he was, he was what? He was drafted here to be a defensive prowess guy, a nice energy guy. Yeah, he just couldn't shoot at but all. He couldn't really last make year. a basket to save his life. Yeah. And if he can at least develop some type of shot, and towards the second half of last year, I believe. He started to he started to hit some threes and he started to find it a little bit. Now, those were twenty five games that were arguably maybe meaningless, but I think it is development. And if he is on a steadier path here, that's only a good thing for the Timberwolves. Absolutely. So that that is point one. That is a a ray of sunshine on a team that in the exhibition schedule should have been zero and three, right? But b- because their subs basically came in and rallied them, uh, finished the preseason one and two. Second guy. Anthony Edwards, okay? Yeah. First two games against Memphis were probably pretty questionable. Now it's his first two games. So, like, you can't weigh that. You can't be like, oh, man, he's not playing well. Uh, last night went uh, 5 of 15 from the field, 17 points. First quarter, though, absolutely fantastic. And he can hit threes. He can hit shots. Nice. Uh, I think it's going to, again, take some time. But here's the thing I don't see, and I might be wrong here because it's it's too early to be judgmental in a good or a bad way. Uh, Dex, I don't see physically, and I don't see how he plays necessarily the direct comp to our guy, Wiggy. Like, I've seen that comparison. Yeah. Oh, man, he sort of disappears, and he might. But, and this is going to sound weird. I think if he disappears, it's in a different sort of, of way. Okay. Um. I think that he has, I, this kid has the ability, I think if he engages to be a very good player, I don't see the exact same when he's not playing well, though. 
I don't see the exact same disinterest that we saw. Andrew basically disappeared completely. I don't think this guy is going to do that. I think there might be times where, where he needs a talking to. Sure. So don't get me wrong here. Um, but in watching him and and his physical ability and how he's built, um, I don't necessarily think you're going to have the exact same frustration because the thing that drove you crazy with Andrew is when he applied himself, it's like, oh my God, this guy's fantastic. In fact, I saw it last night. Yeah. Golden State, same BS. Yep. And people are like, I'm sure they're like, oh, Steve Kerr has unlocked Andrew Wiggins. It's going to be fantastic, right? And he looks, and when the highlights are on and he's going well, he looks great. I think this guy's going to have, I think in this case, we're talking about a player who definitely could have some shortcomings and is sure. going to have to learn. But I think drawing the direct comp to, oh my God, it could ha happen again. It's probably, if nothing else, premature. And I believe from what, I haven't been on any of those Zoom calls, I don't know if you have, but it seems like the kid's pretty, ad like he's a little more animated. He is. And, and I know there was, you know, everyone made it the humongous deal, the pre-draft story of like, well, actually, I really didn't really care about basketball. I was more of a football guy. I wanted to play football. And then that's where the Wiggins comparison started, blah, blah, blah. I still think people were misreading that quote and misreading the whole and I sort of like that quote, of that article. And I sort of like that quote in some ways. Yeah, me too. He seems like he has a little bit more fire with him. And I'm not trying to say that, well, the fiery guy is automatically the best basketball player, the best athlete in any sport. But Wiggins was, let's this be is, honest, yeah. as boring as it got. And you could, you could, you could feel the disinterest from Andrew Wiggins. I don't think we have seen that from Anthony Edwards. I think that Andrew, the difference between these two, is this: I think Andrew Wiggins was athletically checked out. Edwards is not. Now that doesn't mean he's not going to have some problems, sure. and it doesn't mean that he's going to be engaged constantly. But. Wiggy always struck me as the type of guy who at any given time, if he applied himself, could go off and be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And most of the time was like, but I don't even like basketball. This guy, I think, I know that that he's got the football comment that people basically ran with. Yeah. But I think he likes sports. He does. And I mean, this sounds pathetic, but that's a good starting point. <laughs> I mean, it sounds so stupid to say, um, but there were so many times with W Wiggy, where I just thought he doesn't even really care about that. Like, what does he love? And I think the answer was probably video games. Yeah. His and dog. That his dog. Yeah. So, so we saw a spark last night. That's a good thing. No assurances that this kid is going to be fantastic. But I do think that if there's problems, they're not going to remind you directly of what, what we saw from our guy Wiggy here for a few years. Um, Let's see what else here. Oh, bad news for Phil. I wish Phil was here. So <laughs> Nas, Reed, <laughs> Nas Reed came back and played last night. Oh, yeah. Actually played 26-19. So he, he saw extensive time. The fans love Nas Reed. Um, I got bad news for Phil, though. Uh-oh. I'm going to go through the box score for you here, okay? <clears throat> and read you some names, Declan Goff. Okay. Lehman, Akogi, Towns, Beasley, Rubio, Culver. Edwards, Reed, Noel, Herman Go Gomez, Vanderbilt, Hollis Jefferson, McDaniels, and Higgins. What name didn't I read you in a preseason I, uh, game? I didn't hear Nas. No, you did hear Nas, but because of Nas, you didn't hear another name. The leader of the team. Cat. Ed Davis. Ed da oh, Ed Davis. For God's sakes, Judd Zolgad. That's where you needed. Okay, that, yeah. That's Mackey's the guy. basketball whisperer, Phil Mackey. That's Mackey's guy. Honest. That's Mackey's guy when he told us, Ed Davis, right, from oh, the God. Knicks? Yes, he's going to leave. He didn't even get in a preseason game. Oof. Hey, he's uh, he's waving that towel and and keeping keeping the boys fresh. But know? remember the whole thing? It. Like, it's, if you don't play, if you don't start, that's fine, okay? For sure. But how are you going to have any cachet in the locker room when you don't play a minute in a preseason game that, by the way, went into overtime. Not a good start. Poor oh. Phil. I think Phil, I think Phil might have hitched his wagon to a guy that might not make this team. You might be uh, bringing it up next year, but um, I saw some interesting tweets about Ricky Rubio yesterday. Does this make the notes? His, uh, it did effort. not. It did not, but go ahead because I've got some thoughts. So I, I saw some tweets and from, from other local media people and, and some other fans as well that were just saying that I mean, it doesn't seem like Ricky's been like much engaged on the court. It doesn't seem like the effort's really there. It doesn't really seem like he, you know, the the whole tenacity that he talked about, holding people accountable like he said he was going to do in the offseason. And maybe he's still doing that behind the scenes, but on the court, at least, it didn't seem like he was very interested in 
now it's preseason. Right. But some people saw that he seemed a little lax and daisical so far in these three preseason games. I saw those notes too, and I watched the entire game again last night because I'm sick. And um, <laughs> I'm not sick, sick. I'm okay, just sick. Say, I'm uh, just please, sick be in the head. I don't have that. COVID. Um, here's what I saw last night. Okay. And I, I noticed this in the Memphis games a little bit, but it really stood out last night. In the first half of the game, I think it was the first quarter, Ricky got a partial breakaway. And and uh, just to note, D'Angelo Russell did not play uh, because he was battling a minor injury. And so Ricky played more. And in the first quarter, so he got a partial breakaway. And Declan, I'm not kidding you. And I don't know if this is time off. I don't know what. Running down the floor, it looked like me going down the stairs in the morning. Uh, it wasn't an effort problem. Like, it wasn't that he wasn't trying. He just looked a thousand years old, and I don't know why. And I mm. and it, it might come with, with time. And again, the, these are Wolves preseason observations. Yes. So, you know, keep that in mind, just to be fair. But Ricky looked like he was, I would say, the nicest term, lumbering down the court. And I don't know if he's just not in shape yet or what. Uh, I would not say that I'm seeing that he's not trying, but he does not look engaged. And I think it's because he looks old right now. And I don't know why. So do you he, do you think he then he is indeed coming off the bench to start? What yes. do you think? Yes, I think. He's I know some people are. It seems start. like people are split on that. They don't know whether if he could be arguably the best backup point guard off the bench, or would his services be better used as a starter? He still did, and and I, I know that his stats improved once he left the Wolves and went to what Utah and then the Suns. Yep. Um, his shot is still a shot. Mm. Now he did do what Phil likes. At least once, if not twice, last night, I think. He did drive and score. That's good. Uh, but when he's when he is shooting his shot, yeah, it looks the same. Oh and that might change too. Right. Uh, but no, I think long I think uh short term when the Wolves open the season against the Pistons on Wednesday, I think he comes off the bench. Okay. I think he, he does. Last Wolves thing, which is actually a Mavs thing. Luka Doncic oh, yeah. is so much fun to watch. Now I will say he, he's got uh he has the the old Thielen itis because he complains a lot and it gets old. Cat does or Cat has done in the past the same thing. Like every call he does not get, he complains, which mm. I don't like a lot. Sure. Um, but this guy is a one man show. Like he is constantly, it looks like jabbering. He is a great player. He is a dynamic player. They they took him out of the game last night. He went and took a camera from a camera guy. And was taking oh, shots. The, it was the, great. I saw that. But I mean, he is picture. this. He is exactly when, when we talk about what do sports need. This is exactly the kid. Absolutely. This is the guy. It's fun. Absolutely. It's great fun. And I mean, this. He's a special player too. But uh, he put on for an exhibition game, essentially what amounts to a one man play.